What you guys got another video on the Windows 11 everyone wanted. This was the Windows 11 version that everyone wanted to have. It's fully lightweight and debloated. It's the Windows 11 IoT Enterprise LTSC version. They also have an Enterprise LTSC version and they also do these for Windows 10 as well as you would expect. So LTSC, what does it stand for? It stands for Long Term Servicing Channel meaning it receives long-term support instead of frequent feature updates, which is something that people never wanted. It's designed for embedded and fixed purpose devices, such as kiosks, ATMs, medical systems, POS systems, and also industrial controllers. That's what it was made for. It's not made for desktop use, but people are now starting to use it for desktop use. It's the installation is exactly the same as a standard Windows 11 install. You have to go through the same procedure that you would have to go through with a Windows 11 installation. You have to turn off all of this garbage. This is still part of the Windows 11 experience. Unfortunately, this is exactly the same in IoT LTSC versions. This version also provides a 10 year of support with five year of mainstream plus five year extended depending on your specific SKU that you're using. Now, of course, this is gonna minimize feature changes of your operating system, and this will guarantee stability for that device because it must remain consistent over time because if it's an ATM or a kiosk or a medical system or point of sale system, it's gonna need that stability and it's not interested in feature updates like AI, recall, and all this stuff because it's not needed. So that's why feature updates are not part of the IoT LTSC additions. Now, because this is based on the Windows 11 core, it's offering a modern UI, and it also has updated security features compared to Windows 10 IoT LTSC additions. Now, remember this version of Windows is only gonna receive security and critical updates avoiding those disrupted feature updates, which normally end up breaking the operating system. So you won't receive feature updates for this version. So the version we're installing here is 24H2. That means it's never gonna change. 24H2 will be its final build number. It's never gonna be updated. Now, because they're not updating the build version, i.e. 24H2 in this case, and it's gonna stay to that version, for its entirety of 10 years, that means it's a good thing and a bad thing. Because as a desktop computer, it's a bad thing because it's already gonna reach end of life. And it's gonna start having issues with software and other things like that because it was never designed for desktop use, i.e. its purpose was for devices such as kiosks, ATMs, medical systems, point of sale systems, and so on. So. Things like browsers and Adobe software and all of this other particular type of software like Steam, games, these obviously are going to be a bit more of an unknown territory for this because it was never meant to be a desktop operating system. So you could run into issues with some software down the line once the mainstream support ends because you will have mainstream support ending and it will go into extended support. But by then, the desktop version would already have reached end of life long ago. So here is the actual operating system. As you can see, you've got legacy components inside here. No AI, none of that sort of stuff. It's just a legacy software, which is very basic, which some people might like, and some people might not like. And if you want to upgrade these, you can do. There is ways of doing it. If you want to see a video on that, let me know in the comments section down below. But basically, this is it. It's clean. There's hardly anything on here because it's not going to be used. So it just doesn't get pushed with all of these bloated apps that Microsoft love to push on you. So this operating system is ideal for the general desktop user. And that's why I get so frustrated with Microsoft when they can actually offer you something like this for a business, but they're not offering it as a home use option, because as a home use option, I would definitely use this all day long. 
And this is where the down side comes because if you want to use this version of Windows as a home user, you would need to acquire a license. And this is where the debate happened on yesterday's video and people were asking all these questions when I've already answered those questions before. You can see we're running Windows 11 IoT Enterprise LTSC edition and it's version 24H2. It's not activated, but if I did want to activate this, I would need a legitimate license. So where can you get these licenses from? Well, these licenses are sold through authorized distributions or OEMs and not retail stores. So to obtain the license for this version of Windows, you would need a volume licensing agreement or OEM embedded channel relationship. The license is typically obtained via volume licensing programs, such as the Microsoft Product and Servicing Agreement, MPSA, and it's also a Microsoft Consumer Agreement, MCA, or other enterprise licensing paths. You have to go down to acquire one of these licenses. In other words, it's for dedicated fixed function devices, not general purpose, i.e. your desktop computer. It's not designed for that. It's designed, like we said earlier, for kiosks, ATMs, and so on. Now you can download the trial versions of these, which will give you 30 days, and you can run these in virtual machines for testing, and you can do all that stuff. Again, you would get all your downloads for your critical downloads and your actual uh, security downloads through the Windows updates. Once you've got your contract with Microsoft, you will then be offered the media for downloading and installing these, which is your ISO file. So you'd need a legitimate installation media from Microsoft, plus a valid product key and a license. This is normally a volume license key, which is used on these systems. They are not OEM systems. They're not generally anything like that. They're normally done via KMS activation. It doesn't have any sort of co-pilot or recall pre-installed on this system. As you can see here, I'll quickly test the recall and you'll see that recall is not on the system. When I press enter, it says state disabled with payload removed. Now, if Microsoft can offer this in this version of Windows, why don't they offer it for an option with just home users? Because obviously they're not interested in recall for the actual kiosk machines and things like that because no one's going to be using them as a desktop computer. They're going to sit inside some wall somewhere, dishing out money in an ATM system. That's it. Then they're not interested in recall on that and taking screenshots because they would be arrested. So at the end of the day, that is what you can expect with this version. Now, if you open up the browser, it does have Copilot in there, but you can remove that quite easily. That's the only place where Copilot is. Now, as for activation, on this system. I just wanted to point out because a lot of people seem to get that twisted as well. Activation is off the via volume licensing methods, KMS and MAK. So organizations deploying multiple devices typically use key management service, KMS, or multiple activation keys, MAC keys to activate their installations. So if you want to activate it, you're going to need to get one from Microsoft or an authorized uh, reseller of these keys. You can see this one is not activated and it will be deleted after this video because it's in a virtual machine and not on a real PC. You cannot license an IoT LTSC for consumer or general business use. The license terms explicitly forbid using these additions as a substitute for a general purpose PC operating system. So when it comes to Windows 11 IoT, you do you. You basically do what you want to do with your PC. This video is for educational purposes only. This video does not promote piracy and does not violate any copyright or break any community guidelines. Please do your own research and follow at your own risk. So whether you go down that rabbit hole to use this version of Windows is entirely up to you at the end of the day. It's not something I would recommend, but that's up to you. You do you at the end of the day. So is this the perfect operating system? Yes, it is. 
It's not designed for desktop use. It doesn't mean that you can't use it as a desktop PC. It's just not a legit way of using this operating system, period. So hopefully that answers all your questions and you can take something from this video and learn about Windows LTSC and Windows IoT LTSC editions. So can you get a license for this yourself? Well, I think you've already know the answer to that. It's either from Microsoft or from an authorized reseller that sells them on Microsoft's behalf. It's that simple. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Quick shout out to my YouTube members. I appreciate the support. I will be adding in the members list in the next video. I just haven't got around to doing it on this new installation. If you've got any comments on today's topic, let me know in the comments section down below and I'll do my best to answer those questions for you. So have a great day and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.